Hello, 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 my fellow Game Warriors. My name is The Game Warrior, and right now I'd like to welcome you to another Final Thought Friday video, a video series in my would, uh, of mine in which every fi uh, every Friday, I know I'm getting stumbling all over my words here, uh, but every Friday I offer you guys my own in th insights, thoughts, and opinions on anything that's going on in the world right now and really try to go into depth through it. And today... I'm going to be talking about the epic battle between uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and the ongoing console wars um, that are happening right now. And right now, we're in round two, and this is because there have been some major changes to the Xbox One. Now, pretty much unless you live under a rock or haven't been on YouTube recently or even looked at the news outlets, and they've been uh, talking about this as well, the Xbox One has made some major changes um, to their policies and guidelines and everything else. With the Xbox One, you will now be able to use, play, sell, trade, rent games, just like you always have. So there's no, oh, you can share this game between 10 friends, there's going to be restrictions on if you could sell this to GameStop, you're going to have to pay a fee to all this, blah, blah, blah. Now, once you buy the physical copy of a game, when you buy the disc, get the disc game, it is going to be yours forevermore, and that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, community stood up. Um, we said what we believed, we said our disagreements with it, and we won um, that fraction of the battle. Then along with the Xbox One, there's also no 24-hour check-in to go online um, to play your games anymore. If you want to play single-player games offline, uh, you do no longer have to have an internet connection. The only time you need an internet connection is when you are first setting up your Xbox One. From that point onward... You do never have to go online again unless you choose to, and that does make a lot of mem a lot of the members um, of the military happy. I think they were going to get an exemption anyways, but from this, you do never have to be online for Xbox One again. A few other things were changed as well. The entire link to an article, which I have uh, got this information from, I think it is the actual official Xbox One statement, if I can uh, find that again, will be in the description below. You guys know how I am with annotations and links, though, so it, I might forget about that. But if it is down there, be sure to click on that to go and see all of their changes um, to their system. Um, but basically with this... We won. The community won. Regardless if you are a PlayStation uh, fanboy, Xbox fanboy, whether you like Sega, I don't care. Um, if This is a win for the gaming community. We all stood up. We said we disagreed with this, disagreed with this. We're not going to buy this system uh, if it has these certain features. And the community stood up. And we, you know, we won. Uh, Sure, the Xbox One, the people at Microsoft, um, they did it in an attempt to win back followers and stop the hate. They were in massive PR blunders, unlike unlike anything the world has ever seen. Um, it, it, it was horrible. It was horrible PR work. Uh, people um, were putting them down for it all over uh, Facebook, uh, Funny Junk, other picture sites. Um, there was a few, uh, it wasn't Saturday Night Live, but it was the late night talk show people um, talking about it even. Um, even PlayStation, even the PS4, its CEOs, and everyone else were bashing the Xbox One for the features it had. But now um, that all of these features are removed, that these things that people have been complaining out that have been hating um, for so long, um, now that these changes have been made to the system, is it really going to make a difference? I've watched a few other commentators right now. Um, who have this same belief as me? For one, White Boy Seven Street. He has been an avid PlayStation Nation fan. I believe he even uh, coined the phrase PlayStation Nation. Um, he said that way back. Um, but with him, he was saying, regardless of all these changes they made, you know, he he's going to buy PlayStation. He he just is, and that's his belief. He's going to buy that because he's stuck with it for so long, and that's fine. Um, but he believes, regardless, that this was a win for the gaming community, but he doesn't know if it's going to matter. Woody's Gamertag, another um, commentator I watch, he was, you know, on the fence between either one to begin with, was leaning PS4, it did appear. Um, but now with these changes as well, he's in the same boat as I am. Even though he is looking at this by the facts, by everything that the console is putting out, he still has some disbeliefs whether or not the gaming community, YouTube community, is going to let 
the Xbox One um, slide for all of their mistakes. Because honestly, it, my own beliefs is that the my own beliefs are um, is that the people of the gaming community are quite fickle. Um, they really are. People um, once they get it in their mind that they are going to hate on something. They are going to hate it until the thing dies. Um, one thing in particular was Diablo 3. Never played it. I really don't know what it is. The only thing I know is I was supposed to hate it. Um, the whole thing with, I, I, and I do believe it's Diablo 3, I could be wrong, um, but the whole thing with it is when people bought the game, a whole bunch of people bought the game on the initial release date, they go home to play it, and they could not play it. There was some kind of internal error or something with that. And everyone that bought Diablo 3 on the first day, and I think for the first uh, week or two, could not play the game. If I have the game wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but for the first two weeks, couldn't play the game. So from that point onward, no matter what changes they fixed, no matter what patches they put out, no matter anything else they did, pretty much that game is more or less hated by the gaming community. Another thing would be um, compared to the whole SimCity um, game fiasco where you have to be online all the time and their servers crashed and people couldn't play the game uh, with EA and every I think it was EA. But anyways, with that, never played the game, had no interest in the game, but I was told to hate it so I did. And I, it was one of those things to where once I did read into it more, I really understand and I think it was a really big mistake for them. Uh, same with Diablo 3 if that is the game. Um, and it, it's just those things you're told to hate it, so you kind of follow it blindly until you not, until you really look at the information yourself and make the decision on your own. But once you were told, once a gamer in the gaming community is told, okay, this game sucks, do not play it, this is the worst game, it's been a rip-off, blah, blah, blah. Until you play it yourself, you are going to harbor the same feelings, and you are going to hate that game. That is the whole thing that's going on with the Xbox One right now. So many people out there on the sites I'm looking at believe that Xbox is just doing it for the money. Um, that the only reason they're changing this is because they're looking at the polls and looking at everything else and the pre-sale orders and seeing that people hate the Xbox One. That is what people see, and they believe Microsoft is just doing it for the money. Um, or other people are saying, I'm not buying the Xbox One just to prove a point. They already lost me. The Xbox made so many mistakes, they don't deserve my money. And sure, to some extent, the Xbox is changing things a, a little bit for the wrong reason. They are changing things um, for the money. That is always a factor when you are in business. I mean, you, you have to do it. If people hate your product, you have to change it a little bit. And that's what they did. However, I do say... There is another part of the people at Microsoft that did change it for the right reasons. What you really have to understand and what you have to realize is, is that the everyday hardworking people, um, game companies, software developers, designers, um, had no choice in the matter of the of the features going into the Xbox One. Um, the whole purpose of the CEOs of Xbox is they have the final decision. They decide, okay, this feature here is going in. Oh, so um, we are going to make it to where people can't trade games. We're going to put that in. Um, I believe we you should always have to sign in. We should make that a feature. Um, that is not the designer's fault. That is not the developer's fault. That is the CEO's fault. And so every once in a while, people need to get mad at the CEOs of Xbox and not the console itself. Let's not bash the system. The system's going to be solid. I have always believed that. Some of the features were upsetting, yes. For me, I initially, when these were coming out, and even before we knew any speci uh, specifications whatsoever, I believe these consoles were basically going to be each other's equal, um, like the Xbox and the PS3 are today. Each one was going to have something special that the other did not. PS3 had Blu-ray, Xbox had party and uh, talking, communication, uh, connectability, um, but... Same thing with the Xbox One and the PS4. One is going to have a special feature that the other does not. Um, but other than that, they would be in the, tied in the way they play games. After looking at all of the things myself um, this past few weeks, I made a decision. I had to choose a console based on its features 
it's games, and yes, it's price. And after everything Xbox One uh, did wrong, and the fact that the PS4 was going to be cheaper, I decided at the time that I was going to buy a PS4. Now my decision isn't made anymore, of course. Um, once more, I am undecided on which console I'm going to purchase because Xbox One changed everything that I hated, and I hated it just as much as you guys. Once more, I have to look and see which has the best features, which has the best, best exclusives, which has the best of everything. And that is how I'm going to decide which console I am going to buy. As I'm looking through all of this stuff, and only then... Only after I take into consideration absolutely everything from games, features, performance, and price will I decide the system I am going to buy. And I encourage you to do the same. The years of console fanboys need to be a thing of the past. You need to buy the system that you want to buy. You do not need to buy the system that you are buying just to spite the other system. Once you buy a console, you are making a five to six year investment, and you need to go into that purchase thinking as much. So, for my final thought for today's Final Thought Friday, um, what I basically just want to say is, currently, I'm undecided what I'm going to get. Over the next few weeks, uh, maybe even possibly month or two, I am going to be announcing the games for both systems that I like. I'm going to be announcing the special features that each console will have that really grabs my attention. And then, as I said, after all of this, I am going to decide. Firmly, I'm going to sit down and basically think of pros and cons of each system. And I am going to decide the system that is right for me. And that is what I want to convey to you. I'm going to buy the system that is right for me. I'm not going to be the system that's right for my friend. I'm not going to buy the system um, that is right for um, Woody's gamer tag. I'm going to buy the system that I believe is going to be better. I'm going to buy the system that I think is going to have the better games. I am going to buy the system that is right for me. And I encourage you to do the same. When I do decide if I'm going to buy, say I'm going to buy the PS4, when I go to buy the PS4, I really hope I'm not going to be, be the person that is going to tell you to buy the PS4. I will say what's good about it and what's bad about it, but I never want to be the person to say, you need to buy this. Because what I enjoy, what I like, the things that um, appeal to me are going to be different than the, than the things that appeal to everyone else. So when you go out and you go to buy a new console, do not buy a console just because um, your favorite YouTuber buys it. Buy it because you want it, as I said, and for no other reason whatsoever. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you did like it, and please leave a comment in the comment section below. Should be annotations on your screen right now to take you to other videos. Anyways, other than that, my name is The Game Warrior. Be sure you comment, rate, subscribe, but most importantly, I hope, each, I hope that each and every one of you have a very good day.